So it's important to ask what drives you to form a business. A lot of people, you know, take a second to think about what's driving you today. <laughs> is it my baby Yoda or is it something more? What is it? They think it's just leaving the company, but it's about the thing that makes you happy when you wake up. What makes you happiest? What is it that brings you joy? Are you asking yourself those questions? As you're building a business, are you thinking about the empire you could build? That's what I'm thinking about when I think of you. I want to see you smiling just like this. Saturday Inspo Group that I put together, right? And I talk about different inspiration that you can use in your daily life and the topics are usually geared towards women who are interested in law, and I host this once a month on the third Saturday of each month. Today's is financial literacy, and of course, as you guys can probably expect, it's not as well attended as I would like, but I also didn't advertise it as well. So, um, you guys get the added benefit of being here if you are here today. Yay, wonderful. Um, we're going to talk about some financial literacy tips that you can use, right, in your daily life. So, with my kids, right, I actually plan them um, out a different game. So, the first First thing I have them do, right, is they play this game called placement.org. And you can do this easily from your computer or your phone for that matter. If you go to placement.org, it'll take you to a virtual game, right? In this virtual game, you're supposed to be able, and you click the word continue to spend, don't click the teddy bear section, like don't go over there. But if you click it, right? You'll click continue to spend, and then you'll click accept the challenge. <laughs> Look at that. You can see my face, though. Um, so, like, you pick things like this. So, I click find a job, right? And you'll have the opportunity to pick a job. Like, for this one, um, there's a restaurant job where I could earn tips and get an uh, hourly rate of $2 an hour. Then there's one where I could be an office temp and get $15 an hour. And then there's a one where I can work as a warehouse person, but it's in the evening hours. So let's just say for all intents and purposes, I choose this game, right? This this warehouse job, right? This is how much, right, my monthly pay is before taxes. Then I get taxes taken out. So I get $1,200 per month, right? That sounds somewhat similar to some people, right? The amount I have in my bank account is because I've lost everything, right? So I'm only down to my last $1,000. And then once I go through this part, right, I'll click continue. And from here, and let me make sure I turn the sound off because it can be distracting, right? It tells me to like pick one of these. And I love this game because it forces you to write fine stuff for your life. This is actually going to happen on a regular basis in your life. So for me, I know how um, paying for any of the healthcare plans go. I usually pick a middle level pay plan. So I'm going to go with the middle, right? So I know how much that's going to cost me. It's going to cost me about $110 every paycheck. So I already know it's going to take me some time. Now, you can actually determine how far away you want to live. So if you want to live really close, right, to your job, then you pick this. If you want to live really far away, the amount of money that you pay in rent will go down, but the travel costs will go up, right? So I don't want to be 50 miles away from my job. I also don't want to be right on my job, right, because that's more expensive. So I pick probably somewhere around this middle ground, right, where I'm close enough to work, but I'm not so close that I have to actually, you know, go out of my way to get to work. So I think 783 for the rent. It's not so bad. Now, where is rent 783? I would like to know because I wouldn't mind going there myself, right? So if you go here, you click that, you get to pay. A lack of affordable housing is the number one cause of homelessness. It's like teaching you things as you go in this game. So you hit continue. And again, you can do this with your kids. You guys see how much money I got now? 170 all because I picked the place that I wanted to live, right? So then it asks you what you want to do with the apartment, right? So you have to do stuff with you, all the things that you have. So it has you make real decisions. Like for here, I know I can have a yard sale, make some money. I made $150. This is $150 I didn't have. All right. So of course I'm going to apply for a hope food stream. So I'm definitely not going to go hungry because y'all see my bank balance, right? They're approved. Uh, won't get them till next month, but it's cool. 
Um, I definitely have to check my morals. So the game does make you check your morals sometimes to ask you stuff like this. Like, you need money. Look at how much money I have. Look how much money <laughs> I'm considering taking. Will it be worth it, right? Does it? I don't know. Will it be worth it? So I would say no. I'm going to give my child the $10. Like, it's, it's not that bad, right? So you can do this in a different way, right? This is no way reflective of what I would actually do in real scenarios, but you have to look at what your money says. So if I have 550 to pay for the damage and I only have 320 in my account, I'm going to go broke. There's nothing over here that would allow me to get the 550, right? So I don't got no choice. I got to drive away. So this game really helps you understand what it's like to struggle to make ends meet on a regular basis, okay? So it's really hard to do, right? But at the end of the day, you have to get things done, right? You can't, like, not make a decision. And that's what this game kind of forces kids and adults, right, to do. So if you're looking for something just to kind of get your mind around what you're doing. And the only goal I have for you for this game, right, is to see how much money you'll have at the end of the month, right? And so for this particular game, if you get to the end of the month, which is day 30, right, and you have more money than you started with, then that's great. If you don't or you have less, right, then you need to look at what your rent is, right? So rent for what I wanted was like seven thirty eight, and then travel costs was like something like a little bit over uh, $60 or whatever. So the total came out to like eight thirty eight, right, for rent and travel, so that's important, okay? Keep that in mind. Of course, I want to get my kid ice cream, even though I barely have any money, right? Because payday's tomorrow. So now we got lottery pools and things like that. Y'all know, right, if you play in the lottery pool, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, right? Nobody has to pay in the lottery pay. That's a decision we make, right, financially because we think we might get money. So we waste money, right, on lottery things like that. There's somebody who's offering you money. Right? Again, look at how much I have. How much do I need for rent? 700 something. So will that help me get closer? In my case, sure, it will. Right? Will that help in the long run? Living with a friend? It's not always a good idea, but they're going to pay me. Right? They're going to pay me $200 extra a month. So now I have all this wonderful things that are going on. Right? And I'm doing super well. Right? If I paid the money for my child to get into this program, this gifted program, it would cost $50. Now, I need a certain amount of money for rent, right? But I'm a little bit over, right? So you can make a decision here. You can apply for a scholarship, right? Because, you know, why not get a scholarship? Or you can pay the money. So let's just say I chose this time because I know how much I need for rent, right? And I know payday is on the 17th. So I'm going to click the pay the money option. So when I click that one, right? The child has been invited to a birthday party. They need a present, right? You want your child to have a present or you don't want your child to have a present. If you keep your kid at home, then you have that decision to make because you're trying to save money. Do you want your child to have a social life? Cool. Sometimes you just buy the present, right? But these are real decisions that you have to make as an adult, right? Your roommate may have given you another $200, but he brought a whole party, staying up all night and refused to move out. What do you do? Do you put up with him or do you... Ask your landlord to a victim. Well, I mean, you're getting 200 extra dollars, so you just say, put up with it, right? For another situation like this, this is very important for people who are making decisions. So you like how this game is like teaching you as you go, like it gives you teaching tools as you're going through it. And then like, for me, I already know, we're going to have to have some toilet paper, definitely. I'm a big ramen noodles person, so like for the next, uh, what is that, it's a four pack, so if I got four, that's 16 days, I got 15 days left, yeah, that's what I'm going to get, <laughs> I'm just being honest guys, like I, I you got to do what you got to do, and like the drink mixes, that's, what, that's what's going to have to happen, right, I'm going to get some drink mixes, and we're going to have to make it work. All right, so water and drink mixes, and that's going to get us through the rough days, okay? So, again, you have to really think about these decisions. And, of course, you know, I can get more things, but I know I need toilet paper, right? So, I'm probably going to get a little bit more of that. And then I also know that I need uh, ramen noodles and I need a drink mix, right? I could get this other stuff. I really could, right? But I, I can't really afford it, right? But if you see hot dogs, right, that's about a dollar. could buy a pack of hot dogs. That's cool with me. And if I wanted to get anything else, like I could get some eggs, right? That's not so bad. But that's basically the decision I've had to make for the week. $30, right? Could I live off of $30? Well, I got some eggs. 
I got some hot dogs. Take the hot dogs off if I wanted to, right? So I could go one, two, three, four. I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Go one, two, three, four. And then I could go with the eggs. Get two things of eggs and uh, maybe an apple or two. All right, so I got $40. That's so all I'm going to spend. Look how much money I got, though. My balance. I'm going to get paid on the 17th, but look at that money. Right? Other things might happen. So you pay for that. You get yourself some stuff, but you don't really get that much food. And it talks about that, right? It talks about how Americans don't, like, uh, get the food they need, right? Because they're struggling for money. So then as I continue on in this game, right, you move to the continue part. And it asks you how to pay your bills. Now, y'all know... Y'all know I got money, right? It's over here. That's how much money I have. Look at how much the bills are that are due. We can pay them both and not have to pay anything at all. Or, right, I could just pay one, a gas or electric. Now, in the long run, right, do I need a gas bill paid or electric bill paid? I know you know the answer to this question, right? But you could also pay them both. The other option, right, is to borrow money for a friend. Now, if we borrow something, y'all know what happens. You owe something. So you got this bill or you got this bill. Well, the question is, what do I need? What's going to happen the next day? So let's say I make the really hard decision, right, to pay both of my bills because I don't want the bills to pile up. Boom. We get paid. And now look at that. Nine twenty-two. All because what? We paid our bills. Like, you got to think about it. You don't owe anybody any money. You don't have another debt hanging over your head and you're moving forward. Now, remember I told y'all about my health care at the beginning. Look how much I had to pay, right, to get it checked out, right? I paid 75 whole bucks to get it checked out, right, by a doctor. Do I have that money to spare? Yes. My rent is 700 something. I got to make sure I can pay rent. I get paid on the 24th, right? You don't have to do anything. You pay the, the, the $75, you move forward. Now, now y'all know I can't pay this off, right? But I could pay the minimum, right? Or I could ignore it. This is really hard, right? Because in this type of scenario, if I don't pay the minimum, what I end up doing is having this debt, right, still hanging over my head, but at least I'm not going to get charged an overage, right? You can also ignore your credit card debt. But if you ignore credit card debt, what does it do, guys? It piles up. And piles up to the point where you owe, right, a lot of money later on to the credit card company. So the goal for you, right, is not to ignore it, but to pay it, right? But do we pay the minimum? Do we pay this? Well, I don't have this, so I can't pay that off. I can't pay the minimum because then, right, I'll be out money for the rest of the week. So a lot of times people choose to ignore it, right? And ignoring your bill does make this the credit plummet. So I will have a hard time finding a job. Right now, I got a job. I'm not looking for a loan at this point. So the next thing, right, is that I come out to my house and discover that someone is high from my gas and I'm running late from work. Now, I'm going to be honest. Most times you can't call in sick, even though you want to, you can't. Um, so I only have two options. Take the bus or ask a friend for a ride. Now, if I take the bus. That is not a reliable mode of transportation. If y'all been on public transport, then y'all know this is not going to be reliable. So I choose, right, this option, ask a friend, right? And what happens when you ask a friend? First of all, I don't answer phone calls that I don't know, so we're going to ignore. We don't answer these calls. Well, we can answer, I guess. It gave me the option to ignore it, but I didn't. I'm not making that payment. All right? Are y'all seeing this? Is it making sense? Like, this is a game. I'm playing online virtually. You can do this as an adult, right? And play this game. It's called PlaySpent.org. That's the, I don't see if y'all can see it. That's the website, PlaySpent.org. And I'm really trying to make $1,000 last until the end of the month. Now, I have rent that's due, I think, seven something in this game. So <clears throat> when I have rent due, the goal, right, is to make sure that I have enough money to pay the rent later. Well, will I have it? That's the question. Now, you're going to make hard decisions like this, right? Do I buy my child name brand stuff or do I buy the thrift store? Look, my mama always raised us to do this, all right? So thrift store was always the option, right? Always, always, always the option. And as you guys move, oh, hi, guys. I just wanted to, I didn't wave to any of y'all. I've been, I've been doing all the little, I've been doing all my things. Well, waving, hi. 
Um, your bathroom sink has a small leak, right? We could get someone to fix it, right, for 837. Now, I want y'all to pay attention. This is how I make my decisions in this game, right? I make decisions. Well, I don't make that. I make decisions in this game based off of what's coming up next. So if I pay the plumber, right, right now, right, it might work out because then I won't continue to have this problem. And my house won't be drowning in, you know, leaking roof, leaking ceiling, whatever. Okay, so you have to make decisions. If you try to fix this yourself, you're probably going to end up calling someone anyways. So I don't try to do the plumber's job for them. And when stuff happens in the toilet, y'all know. Yeah, I just gonna have to call a plumber. It's really gonna be difficult for you to fix it yourself, right? There are things that will come up in your stress life for financial literacy, things like people giving you stuff to take the edge off, all right? I'm not sure that that takes the edge off. So I've always said no to drugs. That's what I'm gonna do, say no to drugs, okay? So just keep that in mind. Yay, I got paid again. And look at that. How much money do I have at the end of the month? That's awesome, right? But we still gotta make it to the end, right? And uh, that's hard decision right because why can't you do some of these things or why do you have to take these decisions i don't know i'm not sure i'm doing this game for the first time and i think this is the most money i've made in this game the entire time and it's all about well-reasoned decisions it's about making sure that you're thinking about when's payday when do i get this what can I afford to do? What can I not afford to do? When they were asking me if I could get my child ice cream, yes, I could get my child $5 ice cream because I know I'm going to get paid tomorrow, right? But sometimes you're not going to get paid tomorrow. And then you have to make that concession, right? Whether or not you can wait or you need that $5 or that $10, right? It adds up. So in this case, right, your friends want to go out to a concert and you want to go, but you got a kid, right? So you can choose, right, to get a babysitter or you can choose to stay home. A lot of parents need a break, so I'm going to assume that I'm the type of parent that needs a break, and I'm just going to get my child a babysitter, all right? The other thing, right, is that you have a kid that's not eating, right? You're not allowing your kid to eat in school. Some parents have the free lunch things, and some do not qualify. You got to start thinking about how much money you're going to pay for your kid to eat at school. These are real budget, like these are real things you're gonna have to consider as an adult, right? I don't have a kid, but if I did, I can't like take, you know, I can't take money away from my child, right? Everything that you're doing, it, it talks about your morals. The decisions we make with money really helps with moral decisions later, right? If you pitch in to something, right? If you do something in any financial decision you're making, morals are involved. What are your morals? What things are you willing to compromise on? What are you not willing to put money in for? It's important because what about you? What about the way that we are? And I know the way that I am. I would, if someone was sick, I would just, it doesn't even make sense for me not to do it, right? Whew, Lord. So now we're at the harder decisions, right? My head's pounding and burning up, but have to be at work in an hour now this job really important to me totally love it but will i still go into work even if my head is pounding and i'm burning up i would probably do what a lot of people don't do right call in sick right because i understand right that it's going to be a rough time at work but i also know that i don't want to get anybody else sick we're in COVID times so my decisions are really kind of guided right by the pandemic so Helping you understand, like, you can get in trouble at work. It's possible for you doing the right thing is a thing that happens on a regular basis, okay? So, I want you guys to think about what's going on with your careers, with your work life, and think about this question, right? This question that came up. Now, y'all know how much money I need to be able to pay the rent the next day. Will I make it? Do I have enough money to pay it? And how could I handle this? The repetitive work that I do is taking a toll on me. My back hurts badly. I can barely stand. And it's only the beginning of my trip. Now, a lot of people will choose to work through the pain. Will I do that knowing what I know about our bodies? No, I will not be doing that. Right? So the only option here is for me to take the day off, try to recuperate, or submit a worker's claim. Now, y'all know I'm a lawyer. So I am not at that point, right, where I'm going to submit this claim. But you see what this game is trying to do, right? It's trying to give me more job stripes so I get in trouble. So I'm going to take the day off, right? I'm not, I know. I'll take the strike. 
but my body can't take the hit, right? Your neighbor is moving and has offered to pay you $50 to help you, right? But the reserve truck during the time your kid will be starting to play. Now, I'm going to let y'all know right now, I'm always going to go see my kid in their play. I'm always going to prioritize my kid for the most part, not money. And that's just important, right? My car got repossessed because I shouldn't have hung up on my creditor, right? But I can't get to work. My boss has let, has let me go and I have no job and I got no more paychecks. So did I make it to day 30? Yes, I made it to day 30. I won't get any more checks. So now I got to go find a new job, y'all. But look, look at that right there. Okay, I just want y'all to know like this is really a reality that people face. That game for you guys, just so y'all can put into perspective. A lot of times I teach the kids that I work with on Wednesdays and Thursdays in schools about this particular game. The reason why is because I found it, right? I found it, I didn't know what to do for financial literacy and I didn't know how to really make it fun. And then I found this game and I played this game and it had me make some really hard decisions. Y'all saw me making decisions about whether or not I was gonna give my kid money to go to a birthday party. Maybe that $10 would have helped me later. I decided to pay my bills instead of only pay one of them, right? And that didn't hurt me, right, in the long run. So if you think about it, if you tell people or you are inclusive with your financial decisions, you will find that there are a lot of cool things out there that we can do together, especially in the financial literacy space. I think that it's just underrated that we don't talk more about financial literacy and the things that we can do together, right, and getting ourselves to the next level. So I have an assignment for you guys, right? I want you guys to create your own budget plan. And the way that I want you guys to do is I want you to go to um, Nina, the last brand at gmail.com. So that's N E E N A T H E L A S T B R A N D at gmail.com. And I want you to email asking for the budget, right? The budget worksheet, okay? And all I want you to do is fill out that budget worksheet for yourself. It's a personal budget worksheet. Of course, it's sent, you know, by my mom, but um, we were going to send it to you. It's nothing you have to pay for, it's just something that will be help you start creating financial literacy opportunities. And what if? For the month of January, the month of February, all you had was $1,000. How would you survive? How would you make the $1,000 last? Because we spend so much money, you know, without thinking about what happens next. Don't do that when it comes to your financial literacy. And don't let <clears throat> not knowing what to do keep you from doing the right thing for yourself. So I hope that you guys are enjoying your Saturday. I hope you enjoyed this little mini lesson or this mini demonstration of one game that you can play. Um, but I'm going to show you what that form or that budget sheet looks like because, you know, I love my mom. She sends me all sorts of motivational things to get myself on track. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it up and we are going to see it live in a second. But while I'm waiting, y'all. Before you say your prayers tonight, I want you to ask yourself, are you closer to that dream that you had when you were a kid? Or further away. That's all I want you to ask yourself. Are you closer or further away? Making a budget. How to make a budget. So we are actually getting into the second part, the financial literacy activity. Um, so we did the financial literacy game. So hopefully you guys were able to play that particular game. Um, but if not, it's called placement.org. I'll do um, a, a link and stuff to it in the caption. But I have a financial literacy activity um, and I also have a budgeting thing for you guys to do today, All right? My mom sent me this. It is a, you know, 50, 30, 20 rule. Um, so a lot of people who do um, actually plan budgeting and things like that for their futures already know about this 50, 30, 20 rule. But if you don't know, we're going to learn about it together. And I'm so excited because, yeah, there's so many things that we can do uh, together with, you know, just general budgeting and having a plan. This is the how to make a budget. So this is literally on this site. So go to TIAA.org. If you go to their Learn Personal Finance 101, you actually find this. But we're actually working on how to make a budget today. So for making a budget, they actually discuss two different ways, right? It's a fixed or a flexed budget, right? Fixed means all the things that you have fixed that you cannot actually change. It doesn't matter. You're still gonna need this tomorrow, the next day, the next. Flex 
are those things that are really nice to have, right? But you can't really use that. All you need to do is gather six to 12 months of bank statements. Now, I am really helping y'all do y'all taxes for real, for real. So y'all should really just go ahead and pull those bank statements right now and start working on this, okay? So you're gonna gather six to 12 months worth of bank statements. And all you have to do to collect your bank statements for most banks, right, is to pull the bank statement offline. So they should have statements, right? January, February, March, all of those should be in by now for your bank. So this is gonna really help you figure out what you spend your money on. So go gather those, can download all of those onto your computer. Then you're gonna separate them into columns, fixed and flex columns, okay? So these are your fixed, and this isn't like something that you're gonna turn into your accountant, right? This is so you can be aware of how you're spending your money, right? If you add up your monthly fixed expenses, and you should order this based off of what it is. Fix is something that recurs. Flex is something that happens every now and again. The leftover, right, is your flex spending money. That's how much money you have to spend each month, right, from what you get in to what comes out. That's how much money you get. If you're still dealing with the same amounts of issues, right, Keep this in mind. Now, I'm not going to go through this whole site with you guys because y'all know copyright. But if y'all go to the rest of this website, it will be the 50-30-20 rule, okay? So the real rule is 50% or less goes to necessities such as housing, student loans, utilities, expenses you have to pay. Now, student loans, mm -hmm, I have not paid it in, I haven't paid, okay, I <laughs> just I haven't. I put a dent in my EIDL because, yeah. That's my business, but I did not touch my student loans because I really don't know what's going to happen with student loans. And then I'd be very upset if they completely dismissed them and I went on and paid them. Like, I want my money back, right? Then there's, I don't know what that was about. That was weird, guys. My my video stopped. Um, but the 30% goes to the nice must, like nice haves, entertainment, going out with your friends. And then that last 20% is either in savings or it goes towards paying a down of debt. Right, so if you actually split the money that you receive like that, you will actually do so much better. Right, so it's really important to make sure that you are doing and conducting that type of rule with your money. So let's take your normal thousand dollars that you receive. Right, if you are able to, right, you can track all of the money in here. They have a tracking sheet where you can actually track and keep track of everything that you spend money on right so i could download this and actually fill it out and actually have a realistic expectation or budget worksheet okay so this is super important and it's part of getting stuff done so if you have any type of financial worksheets or financial uh things that you can do with your kids or, or yourself even think about this right the the tiaa they have a wonderful program not <laughs> i'm not an ambassador or anything for them but my mom sends me stuff that they do all the time and it's very useful for their customers and for people in general they have resources they want you to learn and if you literally click learn right there on their site and go to the how to make a budget it will help you and there's even more resources there right you can do personal finances you can do retirement and beyond we can talk about life milestones you can also prepare for the unexpected and all of that is free okay and it's just tiaa.org tiaa.org that's it and if you actually make sure that you do these now i'm trying to tell you like, they even got forms. So you don't believe me? Well, hold up, hold up, hold up. They got forms. They got forms that you might need, right? They got forms to move these funds and stuff, like update your beneficiaries because they got brokerage forms, libraries. They got, they got stuff upon stuff for you guys to use, okay? So, like, don't, like, not do this. You guys can do whatever y'all need to and learn. All these companies, okay, have stuff for you to learn. Don't believe me? Let's try another one, right? We're going to go to regions, right, dot com, and we're going to see what they have. And as you guys can see, go here, click insights, right? You can go to next step. What does that say? Financial education. 
They have financial education moving forward. They have money management insights. They have a financial learning system. They even have featured guest advice. I bet y'all didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. I want to know. I can do that, right? But they even have featured guest advice, right? They have Next Step webinars. They have Next Step podcasts. And these are just the thing. And they even have downloadable worksheets. Look at that, guys. Downloadable worksheets, right? They even have a back-to-school spending plan. They have financial goals. And where is this at? It's at regions.com forward slash next step. Literally, again, nobody pays me for these things. I just want y'all to know financial literacy stuff because it's not as hard as you have been told. And I know these financial gurus, they're going to get me. They're going to get me. But I am here to give you information about financial literacy. And if somebody ain't listening and you're not looking for it, you might not know that it exists. But people actually want to help you. There are plenty, plenty of people who want to help you, okay? They really want you to have this information. Like, how come nobody told you this? Really didn't tell you. Like, I don't understand. I don't get it. But if you go here, right, better money habits. Look, I'm on Bank of America, guys. Like, I feel like I'm telling y'all a secret. But, like, I'm on Bank of America's website, bankofamerica.com, right here, better money habits. Look at this. Credit, debit, savings, budgeting, home ownership, auto, retirement, college. Let's just pick one. Saving and budgeting. Oh my gosh, they have so many resources online for free. Do you know that is where a lot of, don't look, like, the financial gurus are going to get mad at me, but like this is where the information is. And I'm going to go a step further because I will not be, you know, talked about because y'all want to know some. All right, I'm going to just give y'all a quick hack, right? And this is financial literacy plus business literacy at the same time. I'm going to take you to my favorite site for my business, right? Because I do trademarks for a living. If you like trademarks, I like trademarks. We can do it together, okay? We can. I do workshops and all that. But let me tell you, <laughs> again, the trademark people are not going to like me. They're not going to like me. But I'm trying to tell you, I tell my clients that they could do this themselves. I just make it so they don't have to, right? Because it's hard for them. They get confused. It's too much information. But if you go, <laughs> same damn time. But like, look, USPTO.gov forward slash trademarks. Learning and resources. All the resources built out for what you need, right? They have it for attorneys, agents, and paralegals. They have it for inventors and entrepreneurs. And you are under that category. So if you click that, right, you, you can get started. Get help. Understand the basics. A lot of the stuff that I'll be explaining to y'all is because I took the time to go through this website and read it from cover to cover, okay? And it's the same information. Why would I tell you information that's not in alignment with the people who accept your trademark applications. So again, if you wanted to do this on your own, you definitely could. Do you have to? Is it fun? Is it easy all the time? No. But if you want to get information online, we are in a whole new era. It's there. It's literally there. It's available. And I'm going to show you another one, right? Because y'all don't know about this. Again, I find these things out from my investment groups and people who like money, right? If you like money, tell me, yes, I like money in the comments and I'm going to keep on talking about the money, all right? Because my people didn't show up today, right? So nobody is going to be denied all this awesome information that I had in my head. So here they come. I was going to show them anyways. So my goal for you, and I'll put a whole list. I'm going to put this up on YouTube so that you guys can go watch it, right? It's not going to do anything except for be information that you guys can use. But we're going to another site. This is one of my favorites, right? When the market is in better stage, you can use this site to put a lot of your money in. But do it now, right? And so when the market is actually going up again, You'll actually have a mount in your, my girl Anya tagged you in her comment. I love money. Look, you better love money because money is good. Because as I told y'all in that game I played earlier live for y'all, right? Because I did it. 
I did the whole virtual game. If you don't know the game, playspent.org. You have to make decisions about money that affect your morals. And you can money too, right? <laughs> and if y'all pay attention, what that say? What that say? Even them, even them got registered trademarks for their stuff. I'm just putting that out there. Um, I'm not saying you got to get a trademark, but I mean, why not get a trademark? So if you go here to Marcus.com, okay, Marcus.com, so all you have to type in, you don't have to type in the U-S-E-N stuff. You don't have to do that, right? You go to the tools and resources section, tools, insights, app, financial calculations, resources, build your savings, retirement. Let's go into investing. I feel like y'all need some investing tools. Yes, registered. They re Are you registered, girl? Go ahead. I love it. Get yourself registered. All right. So look at this. Four things to know about robo-advisors, the power of compounding money. What is your 529 plan? Do you even know what that is? What does 529 mean? It's up there on markets.com. Four common investing myths. Is art a good investment? All the things that you've been wondering about. And you've been on the internet, on Google. On Google. Girl, yes, go ahead. I love seeing trademark people. Trademark people, y'all are my people. And if you need to trademark more things, let your girl know I like trademarking things for people who are serious about their stuff. Yes, it is a college plan. Look, you better know the money stuff, okay? And all of this information doesn't need to be Google. Stop Googling stuff. Go to the places and the locations that already deal with money. They put out reliable fact-checked resources online so you would get good information and not just information. Google searches are for people who are not at the level. Look, go ahead, financial coach. I love it. Like they are for people who are not at the level of excellence that you're going to be at, right? Google searches are basic. We're not basic. I told y'all this. We're not doing no more basic stuff. We are putting our money in places that matter. High yield savings accounts. We're putting our, our bank accounts in different areas. We have operating accounts, expenses accounts. We have payroll accounts. We have different accounts for our business. We Yes, girl, I'm on Clubhouse. Same name, everything. You'll see the same profile picture. Go ahead, girl. Follow you, girl. I look, look, I love money. Um, I also love making sure that people are on top of it because in business, if you don't trademark your stuff, that you don't even know to think about this stuff. But once I start looking through your financial stuff, which means how your business is making money, you tell me like Nina, $10,000, $100,000. I don't know. Look, when you get into business, you will understand they have accounts on accounts. As you said, look, look, they got accounts on accounts on accounts, okay? It does not matter, right? This is business. This is getting our business together. And as you guys said many times, right, you don't know because you ask not and you have not because you ask not because you know not where to look. So I'm telling you where to look. This I like you too. Look, let's get together. Let's make some things shake. Look, let's put some stuff together for some business owners because I got packages on packages. I like people knowing what they're doing. I like when people want to get their ish together and they not, right, trying to play with these people because I want you to win pitch competitions. I want you to have a business that's trademark. And I want you, right, to be able to articulate what entrepreneur really means because it's not just a person who owns a business. It's persons who fill out and create needs that people actually want to pay for. Things that are missing from the market and we don't have these conversations on a regular basis because we don't know how to manage our money. We still stuck there. And I'm telling you, every company that you have money invested in has financial resources and they will help you and educate you for free. It does not pay them to not educate you for free. You wanna know why they won't, you know why they educate you for free? Because when you get the money, you're gonna put it back in their bank. When you get the money, you're going to put it back in their bank. Why would they not give you educational tools? Why would they allow you to stay ignorant? They don't. Free. It, it is free. And if you would just listen, right? Listen, listen, Linda, listen. There are people out there trying to help you do that, right? There are bankers out there 
trying to help you. And if you make a good enough relationship with your bank and other financial resource centers in your area, they have community grants for people like you. <laughs> you don't believe me? Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> I got y'all. I got y'all because we're doing financial literacy today, whether you want it to or not, right? I'm going to show y'all a little, 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 little thing. <laughs> and y'all can tell me if you even knew about it, right? Look. Look, you can, as a for-profit business, apply for this. If you have a regions in your area, they are going to love, right, investing back in you if you are investing in them and you're creating projects that they can invest their free resources and enroll themselves in it, okay? So, I'm going to show you something. On regions.com, I want you to type, right, this heading, investing in our communities. Regions.com, investing in our communities on Google. It will pull up this site, right? On this site, they want you to submit proposals every month. Now, this only works if you actually have, right, your banker and you have a relationship. If you don't have a relationship, they'll know who you are. They can't even figure out how to invest in you because they never met you. So you need to start taking advantage of the free resources and including them in your for-profit and non-profit businesses, okay? But look at this, economic and community development. They got three, oh my gosh. They have three audiences that they're looking for. They're looking for economic and community development, affordable housing, job creation, small business development, home buyer education and retention, neighborhood revitalization and stabilization, education and workforce, student comp, comp I'm sorry guys, I'm getting all these text messages right now. Student competency and skill building, college and career readiness, educational access and success, credential building and employment, educator training and resources, financial wellness, finance education for adults, youth, and other people in vulnerable positions, financial planning tool resources, including Regions Next Step, and integrated asset building. Look, let me tell you, if you run a financial coaching business, they're looking for you. What are you doing? What are you doing? Please, please submit your business, right? It says eligible organizations focus on one of the three strategic priorities are invited to submit a proposal on our online portal. <laughs> yeah. When I click the online portal, because y'all not, not ready. Y'all don't want to do this. Y'all don't want this money. Y'all wanted this money. Y'all would have been applying for this stuff. Y'all would have been looking. Look, the banks have the money. Why are you going anywhere but your bank? Why are you going anywhere but your bank? Your bank got the money first. Your bank is the biggest investor in your community. I guarantee you that. They put their money in everything. All right? Look, all you got to do, and look at this. Look, look what I'm doing. I already have an existing one, right? So it says log into my existing one. I could definitely do that. But you just need to click submit a new proposal. And that's it. That's it. That's it. That's all you have to do. That's it. That's all. That's it. That's all. That's it. That's all. And I'm going to submit one for my for-profit business very soon, too. And then review them monthly. So you got to. Monday. <laughs> I'm just saying, put your proposal together. Get a worksheet. If you don't have a financial advisor or accountant to get you together on your operating budget, get one, okay? It takes so little time to actually pull together the operating agreement. And we talked about, how did I tell you you had to do it? How did I tell you you had to do it? That's it. That's, that's it. That's all. That's it. That's all. That's all you have to do, okay? And I showed you. Look, look, look what I told you. This worksheet, I didn't even make this. This was from TIA. And I showed y'all how to get there, but we're going to do it again just so y'all can remember because I need y'all to learn, right? I need y'all to learn. All y'all got to do is go to TIA.org and click learn, literally learn, personal finances, really, that's it, how to make a budget. That's the first article they have up there that's featured. When you click it, you scroll down. We got a tracking thing they created for you, and they even have, right, this whole thing about how to gather your information. That's it. Gather the 6 to 12 bank statements. That's it. I'm trying to tell you. This is it. This is what you need. This is what I've been trying to tell you. These people on the financial arena, the banks, the, the wealth management companies, all of them put out free resources. And none of us are taking advantage of them. Why? Because we don't know. Two, because we feel like at the same time, it's so hard to read it and we're not going to do it. So 
Yes, if you don't want to do it, trust the financial coach, trust somebody who has an expertise in this area. But if you are actually just wanting to do it and you don't know where to find the information, please don't let that be an excuse no more because I just gave you all of the information, all of the tea, all of the information that you could possibly need about where to go find your financial tools in four, maybe five different ways. And on top of that, right, I even told you how I found my information. Where did I go? Y'all, please, please, I'll do it again just for the people who didn't even come here and see this, right? When I go to USPTO.gov forward slash trademark, they have something called, right, learning and resources and this is on the home page too if i click this and go to the home page right because i click the header for most stuff i go to home page learning and resources and there's all this information now i know y'all not gonna read this look i know y'all not gonna read it i know i know you're not gonna read it and if you're not gonna read it then go get you some help but if you get you some help if you get you some help please please don't let that be the only thing that you do for your business all right, I'm telling you, it does not pay to be ignorant in your business. You end up paying more people to tell you things that you can find out for yourself. And it just doesn't make sense to me. If you got the money, spend the money. Great, wonderful, love it, right? But if you over here trying to make, you know, some 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 pennies push together, you trying to figure out how to pay your financial coach, your your law, your your lawyer, your trademark lawyer, like all of that, like if you're trying to figure out how to pay all these people then you might want to take some advice for yourself and save yourself some money and first learn for yourself before I could do any of the resources and stuff that I have. See, <laughs> if you get some help, please take their advice. Look, because look, ain't nobody just trying to give you bad advice. Now, I will tell you, there's some bad advisors out there, right? There's some people and I ain't going to call them out, right? But look, I don't try to go into financial literacy uh, past the basics, okay? I know my limits, okay? I help you do budgeting. I help you get your life together. But everything else, like, I can do a good profit and loss sheet. I can do a good budget. I can do a good savings plan. I can do all that. <laughs> but beyond certain things, I just go to my accountant and let them do all the taxes and the filings and all that. It's just not my desire in my life, okay? I just don't care to be a tax. Uh, represent representation for nobody. I would prefer my accountant to that. I just, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> so I can do the stuff that you need, right, to make that filing, but I am not doing the other stuff, okay? Because they gave me a, uh, I think it's like an 80 page worksheet. I'm not doing that. I'm not, I should. But <laughs> I went and pulled my profit and loss stuff and put it together in a profit and loss worksheet for them. And I said, look, here, you do it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't. I know it would be way less money, but I would just rather pay you than try to figure this out by myself. And I'm telling y'all, people don't understand because they literally have been by themselves their whole time. So as soon as they get help, they're just like throwing stuff at you, right? But you gotta be ready. Like I've had people come to me and ask me questions like, oh Nina, could I do this? I was like, sure, you can do pretty much anything you want to, right? But it's not about can you, it isn't smart to do it. Like, we can do anything. Like, I don't, there's no limit to what you can do. But you know what? What you should do, what I would recommend you do, is completely different from what you can do. Anybody can, right? Decide they're going to form a nonprofit and pay themselves and, you know, go ahead and take all the profits and pocket the money. Like, we could do that. You could gonna go to possibly go to jail but you could do it right i'm not here to advise you about how to get away with stuff i'm here to tell you what's not smart for you to do in your business so if you would like to right get yourself to the next level if you're trying to move to that next level definitely girl i follow you back girl just find me on there it's nina underscore ronnie same as here um i will find you and then just dm me after here um so i can also find it because for some reason I can't look at my following list and find my new followers. Like, I don't know why, but it's so many followers. <laughs> but it's not that many people. But it's so many followers now that I can't go back and look at my following list. So please just DM me, y'all. Just know it's not personal. It's all just because I'm, I'm out of it on this whole Instagram glitch thing. Like, I need them to get it together. But long story short, like, this information is information you can use. But if you don't know how to do this, if you don't know how to do this, don't do it by yourself. Don't 
I look, I am not queen of everything. I'm queen of somebody help me. That's that's where my queen is. Okay. There's areas where I find my expertise is a lot more right on certain things. And there's areas where I'm just like, girl, how you do that? Come show me. Look, I'm trying to figure out what happened with my payment process. Look, cause look, if you're a lawyer, <laughs> pro tip, provide financial coach out here. Um, if you want to advise lawyers, we use law pay. If you get really, really fluent in the law pay system, we will pay you. Just saying. Anyway, um, because they be charging all these fees and I be getting mad because I don't understand where the fees are coming from. It's my money. It's my money. You did nothing. You did nothing. Um, but anyways, uh, for law pay, they just introduced some credit feature, right? Where like they can have like PayPal credit, like they created one for law pay and apparently it's in beta version. So if you can start finding information about that, girl, you'll be ahead of the curve. So that is one thing I will tell you is a pro tip of what I'm looking for as a lawyer, but people are looking for financial information, financial tips and hacks, if you will. There's no hack to financial literacy. You have to do the work. You have to do the work. I'm sorry, y'all not gonna like me, but you have to do the work. You have to do 50, 30, 20 if you want to get basic with it. 50% goes towards your fixed expenses. 30% goes to your flex expenses, which are your maybes, must, maybe things that you can do. You don't have to, but these are things that you would like to do. And then 20% goes to your savings and paying off your debt. Now, I personally think that 50% should go to your savings and paying off your debt. And you should learn how to live off the other 50%. But that's personally how I just feel like I should be as a business owner. And that's where I'm trying to get myself. So when I start getting a regular paycheck on a regular basis, 50, 20, 30 is the way to be. Um, it's girl, you know, my mama, she 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 be pushing it on to me because she trying to prepare me for a life after her. And I, I really am thankful because she'd be annoying with it, but she'd be right. So I'm telling you guys, like if you want to reach your next level, if you're trying to go beyond your odds, you're going to have to start budgeting your money and not spending outside of your budget. And I'm not telling you this because I don't want you to live your life. Live your life with budget. Like if you budget accordingly, you can afford that life that you want. You can go on those trips that you want to go. I'm trying to figure out how to go on this $7,000 trip to Egypt right now. Okay. In April. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I got to make about double that. For my clients in order for me to do it because 50% have to go to my fixed bills. Okay, so I'm trying to make double that. But look, I'm trying to figure out how to go on a $7,000 trip to Egypt because it's all, everything is paid for the breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And on top of that, I'm going to Egypt because I've always wanted to go to Egypt. I've never been able to go. And my business mentor, coach, and freaking amazing boss woman of a person is the instructor. And I'm going because of her. Like, I don't really care about much else. But if I find out that there's black excellence anywhere in a city that I want to go to, like, I'm going to figure out how to do it. So her name is Kezia, Kezia Williams, K-E-Z-I-A, okay, Williams. And she's got an Egypt thing coming up where she is the speaker. But I really like that everything's included, even the flight and the hotel. For seven days, six nights, and you get all the food, and you get all the informational tea about business. And she is literally the person you want to talk to. Like, she's that woman. Like, she's pulling down $7,000 checks from YouTube. That's the woman you want to talk to. Um, so I'm telling you guys this from personal experience. Get into your budget. Be serious. Every time someone gives you money, every time you get a check, 50, 30, 20, Okay. 50% goes straight, right? Straight to the bills. Nothing else. Nada. It, nothing. Okay? 30% is all you have. And really, I would tell you 20% is all you have. 30% goes to your savings. But that's just me. 30% <laughs> will go to your savings or paying down any debt that you have. Okay? If you can put this into perspective, if you can handle your business, right? Handle your business like you handle every single thing that matters to you. You will start seeing, right, the payoffs and the payouts, okay? You will start seeing the checks come in and you actually being able to not only survive, but thrive in the months that you are in. But if you're not putting the time into your business or your life, your life is your business too, your life, right? If you just keep spending and you just get surprised when an over, uh, overdraft happens every month, you're going to get to a point where it's going to be too much, especially that credit card debt. 
Y'all, that credit card debt sneaks up on you. I have an Amazon Business Prime account right now. And let me tell you, it is hard paying that bill off because it's so seductive to use the credit card for pretty much everything. And many times you have to because you have to wait till certain money is in the account before it can auto draft. I'm going to get to a point where I don't have to do that. It's going to auto-draft on its own, right? But for now, because, <laughs> you know, there's uh, people who was out here all the time scamming, right? I'm checking every single record, every single payment, every single expense on that credit card bill to make sure that that was something I spent and not somebody, some crazy person who took my card did, okay? So keep that in mind. Keep your business on level one and go back and watch the beginning of this video i played a really fun game right for y'all for like 30 whole minutes some of y'all stayed some of y'all didn't but this game playspent.org is a game you can use right i use it right now when i teach financial literacy to kids but it really helps put things into perspective because they don't know they don't know what happens when you make decisions about money and what happens after the emotions that you experience while you're doing it some of those questions in the game are a little hard. Like they had to put the family dog down in one of the questions. Okay, I didn't get those questions, thank God. But I'm just saying, there are questions in that game that are real. They ask you about health care and what health care package you want to choose. All of that. That game really helps me connect to the kids on a deeper level. It makes it so much easier, right, as an adult and as a kid, right, to connect because you can finally see what I'm talking about. You have to see what happens. They be so excited. They're like, oh, look at me. I got $1,000. $1,000 is not a lot of money. And by the end of the game, they're like, oh, it's not a lot of money. I know. It's not, is it? So you probably don't want $1,000 a month, do you? You probably want something more than that. And that's what we start at, right, because that's what they be trying to offer them. Five dollars an hour, seven, eight dollars. Look, I want fifteen and above dollars an hour. That's that's my minimum. So we started in there, and for me, I'm way past the fifteen and above. Okay, I charge three fifty per per hour for me. Okay, for me and mine, that's what I charge. Okay, but I do have a little special package. It's like fifty dollars. Okay, and you get an hour of my time, but you buy me food. And if I have to travel there, it's a hundred. Okay, so I'm telling you, you are in charge of your future you're in charge of your game it is your life and you're in charge of your money how you steward the money given to you is what determines whether or not it can be multiplied if you don't steward the money you have you will lose it before you use it right and if you do steward it well right you can take it to another level and i want you to reach that other level i do this is your financial literacy inspiration i hope that you were inspired i hope that you come back to another live i don't know what i'm gonna do next but i really did like being able to talk to y'all about financial literacy i was in the spirit i was motivated but more so people didn't show up to my zoom the wonderful zoom that i was going to give all of this insight and a video on youtube i was gonna do it all but it's okay because i had y'all so that means that the people i was meant to inspire right were here and I don't do anything without intentionality behind it. So I hope, right, that we are in connection for more than just now. And I see you at the next video. And regardless of where we go in the next few days, I hope you know this. You are the GOAT, okay? You are the GOAT. That means the greatest of all time of your money management. All you have to do is take the time to really put in a budget for your business and stick to your budget. If you don't stick to your budget, then you're going to find surprises later. Eventually, it will get easier. It will. You'll get a team of people to help you. You'll be able to manage money more beyond your wildest beliefs. But you have to start managing the little that you've been given first so that you can be multiplied to the big. But if you're not managing the little well, it's hard for people to give you the big. So keep that in your perspective. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. I just randomly decided to do a live. I think I should just randomly decide more often. But I thank you guys so much. And I had all this information inside of me to share. So I'm glad that I shared it with people who really value the content because that is what's important. I value you. You value the content. And we can value each other together. Now go value your business. <laughs> all right. Bye, guys. Talk to you now. And talk to you later. Are you closer to that dream that you had when you were a kid or further away?